Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is Bev from Art by Bedell, and I have another new page to show you in our fall journal. This page is has a belly band on it, and it has candy corn. I don't know about you guys, but I love candy corn. It's pretty sweet, but it's pretty good. From This is the page that will be in our journal, and it's on the same um, section that we did the pears on, and it was the left side of the paper. So inside, here's our belly band, and inside it we have a very large candy corn tag for journaling on. And then we also have a piece of echo print paper that can be journaled on, and this is done with the ferns. This is the bracken fern, I believe. And our project today is going to be pretty much mimicking this one, only we're gonna make it small enough to put fit in an A4 size journal page. So we'll put this aside and this is what we're going to make. We are going to make a smaller version of that, only it's going to be on a journal panel. And this is what we're going to make here. So we have our panel and we have our belly band with our candy corn on it. And we have a little piece of paper inside that can be used for journaling that has some ferns on it. Then we have our panel that has some embossing with gold embossing powder. And then of course, what we usually do with our stencil with a gesso and, can and some candy corn in a handmade ruffle with the sewing machine. So we'll put our piece of paper back inside. And we also have a tag, and it's a piece of candy corn. Now I'm going to show you that it can go inside the belly band like that. Or if you use this on your journal page and you only attach it on the left and the right, you can use it as a tuck spot and put your candy corn inside. So let's put this aside and let's show you how I make that. So to start with, I have my piece of cardstock and I need to get it down to size. Just like we did in the last video, we're going to tear this until it's the appropriate size for an A4 journal. And we need to get the length, which is about like here. And it doesn't, nothing has to be measured. I mean, if you'd like to measure, that's fine. I usually am in too big of a hurry to measure. And so I just either measure it up against something like what I'm doing here with this tag that I had previously made or you know I, I I'll just guess at it so we have our piece of cardstock now torn and around the outside edge of this we are going to take our rub and buff and this is antique gold and along this deco edge that we have created here by pulling our paper toward us we're going to rub on the rub and buff okay so we've gone all the way around and then the next thing we want to do is take our stencil with our gesso. So we have our gesso and you could use white acrylic paint or even like a gold color paint or um, whatever you want and change it up, make it look like what you want it to look like. So I'm gonna take my stencil and I've been using the leaves and you can use any fall stencil that you want. Maybe you have a pumpkin stencil or maybe a candy corn stencil, who knows, right? And you can just switch it up and make this look like your own. And, and since this is, well, since this is what I'm doing for the journal and I'm keeping everything cohesive, this is what I have out, so I'm gonna keep using it. There we go. We have our leaves done on our cardstock. And we have to set that aside until it's completely dry. The next step that we're going to do is with some embossing, with embossing powder and the heat. And this has to be completely dry, this, this gessoed leaf here. Otherwise, we're gonna end up getting bubbles in it from heating it with a heat gun, which is what we have to use for the embossing. You'll see. So I have one that I created the other day and yes I did get some gold over it here and I want to get that wet and we're going to use that so that we know that our gesso is totally dry here. We want to stamp on this with some Versamark ink 
my script stamp and emboss it in gold. So I will take my stamp and I'm gonna stamp over the whole thing. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a watermark effect. I'll show you why that's kind of important to me right now that I stamp over the whole thing instead of just the sections that I want to emboss. So then I'll take my gold powder and I'm just gonna sprinkle it randomly here and there. I'm not gonna sprinkle the whole image. There, so I did like three places, one, two, three. And we will heat set this with our heat gun. So we have that done. And as you can see, I did not put any embossing powder on that part. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but you can see that the script still shows because it's a watermark, which is what originally the Versamark pad was, was a watermark pad or is, but it also works with embossing. So, And this is why I wasn't too concerned about having rub and buff here because to begin with, probably what we're going to put on, this is going to hide it. But another thing is, it's just another little bit of gold in it. It just adds some more dimension to it. So we have this done. And now we have our, our paper or our fabric ruffle. Now, I don't have anything set up to show you this on the sewing machine. So I thought I would just take like a piece of paper. And what I've done is I've made mine approximately two inches. Now, if that all depends on what size you're putting your ruffle on, how big you want the piece of back paper. Now, as you can see here, it was much bigger than two inches. It was probably more like three inches here, but I had a bigger piece of paper. So, and you now have a piece of fabric and it's a strip that I tore. So I have frayed edges, which is what I wanted. And you wanna make sure that your piece of paper that you're laying it on is a little bit wider than your fabric strip. So on this one, I don't have as much room along the sides as what I do on this one. That doesn't matter. And actually it doesn't matter if it's the same width, if you don't mind not seeing much of it underneath. I wanted to see more. Let me show you how I, I do this on my machine just by telling you about it. I'll lay my piece of fabric on my piece of paper. I will start my stitching here, which is going to be a zigzag. And I'll go in like two stitches and then making sure my needle is down into my fabric and my paper, I will lift up the presser foot and I will take my thumb and I will pinch and bring up a fold. And then I will bring up another fold. Then I'll lower my presser foot and I'm going to stitch just a couple stitches and I'll, I'll connect with this first. I hope you can see, get the first ruffle here, the first fold. Get that on with a stitch and then I can go in and I'll fold up another one and fold up another one and keep moving along a stitch at a time until I get all the way to the bottom. And of course I've back stitched here and I'll back stitch down here to hold it in place. Now if for some reason you should need to cut your ruffle because it's too long for the project you're on, you can cut it like right here and then just put some glue to hold your stitches in place and then you have another piece that you can use for a tag or whatever. A page tab. I hope that explains it a little bit. Sorry I can't show you. So I have my ruffle on my paper and I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch across the top here and the bottom here. Probably about a quarter of an inch inside my paper here. Be right back. All right I have my belly band stitched onto my panel and I want to decorate my panel a little bit. Our theme is candy corn, and I have some little pieces of candy corn here that I'm going to put probably about five of them on. I'll take a little bit of my art glitter glue just along the bottom half of the candy corn, and then just tuck it slightly in so that it sticks out beyond our ruffle so that we can actually see it. And then I'll alternate going back and forth on one side and the other side. So one side will have three pieces of candy corn, and the other side's going to only have two pieces of candy corn. And we have all of our candy corn on. Now this is done pretty much the same way as what I did my bigger one. So should you want to make a bigger one, what I did was I used some of the bigger pieces and I did on the paper with the bigger one. And then I tucked the little ones in the ruffles of our, of our fabric ruffle. We have that. And then I want to put a little bit of a button with some fabric behind it. And I just have this piece of, 
of fabric that I had used for another project and I'm just going to cut off and fray the edges a little bit a little piece here that I can attach my button to so I just have some of the wax linen thread on my needle I'll go down through my button in through my little piece of fabric and then just take a guess about how far I need to go and hopefully my buttons not sliding off here and then I want to come back up through the other hole on my button now this is an antique pre-civil war day button it's a wooden button with a wooden flower cutout on the top some of them are broken but I still use them for embellishments because they're such a unique button I'll tie that in a knot and trim the length off to my desired amount which is right there and I'm going to use some fabric tack to put this down I'm going to put a little word behind it and I think what I want to do is put this little word says joyful and I'll just go around the edge of it with some black ink and then since I'm going to put this on fabric I will take my fabric tack put a little bit on my little word here and I'm going to send or I'm going to put it between the two pieces on the right of candy corn and just push that down in there and then get a good amount on the back of my button here and lay that a little bit over top of my my word but not so much that you can't read the word I'm just going to catch that corner right there and that completes the top of our panel with our belly band and our corn so inside this I have found this book at um, Dollar Tree, Dollar General. And I thought it was a, a nice little book, but what I liked about it was the paper inside. I also liked that it was the spine was glued so that when I took a piece of paper out, it just pulled out and I didn't have any anything on the edge here that was kind of distracting like holes or whatever. But it has a nice little fern print on it. I'm gonna fold that in half and it's going to slip inside our belly band just like that is just the right size there we go just like that i'm not sure what you're going to do with this and being that it's one of the panels that's in my etsy shop for sale i want to finish off the back in case you don't make a pocket out of it and you'll see the back and well we want the back to be nice and neat right we don't want it to look sloppy when we turn it over so we will just take a piece of and this is some uh, coffee stained copy paper that i used ferns with and I'll just go around the whole outside and press that and make sure it's down and make sure I don't have any seeping glue coming out there we go and so we have a nice neat, neat background that can be journaled on and that's the front of our tag now inside the one that I showed you has a journal card made of a um, piece of candy corn we sized that down so we had one that we could use for this and what we want to do is take the back and we're going to take our India black ink and our line stamp and we're going to put some lines on this for journaling now the edges of this I don't I've chosen not to use my dauber because I want to have like a, a sharp edge on it so I have a graphic to pigma pen that has a chisel edge to it and I'm just going to go around my piece of candy corn once you get one of these pens started, they're a felt tip pen. Once you get it started, they tend to get a little bit of a groove in there. And so it goes around the edge of your paper pre pretty nicely. There we go. So now we have a nice edge and it dries quickly too. There's our candy corn. Now our candy corn can be either slipped inside our belly band or if this is put made into a pocket for your journal page, you can use it as a tag for inside your journal page i'm going to slip it right in here for now so that it doesn't get lost and that completes our project how easy is that guys you say but i don't have candy corn right i just have a one that i was playing with but i can show you i need to go around the edges of this one which i have done on the one that i have saved i just this was one that wasn't done yet but anyhow it gives you an idea without me taking the time to go print one off to show you of what I'm giving for a freebie is a sheet of candy corn that you can use in your own journal. So if you would like this, then you need to email me and then I will email it back to you. I am new to digital. I'm testing this out, the water's out, and see if this is something that I really want to do and see if it's something that you guys are happy with when you get it. And if it is, then we'll go from there. 
So if you'd like this candy corn, just give me an email and the email will be in the information um, in the information box of this video. I will list uh, or post a picture of the finished candy corn piece right after this video so you can see what it what it really looks like when it's done. This just doesn't have all the details in it. I also want to share with you that I made some ruffles. These are ruffles that are kind of in between what we made today for our panel and what we have on this page here that I'm putting in my journal. So I think they were like eight or eight and a half inches long. And I've used some fall fabric with leaves on it for my ruffle. These will also be in my Etsy shop along with the the panels that I had made. So, so again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again here um, soon when we have our next video in our fall journal. You have a great day. Bye guys.